want to improve meniscus repair outcomes, we need to start by looking at the basic science. We know that for strength, the suture should be placed vertically so that they traverse perpendicular to the circumventral fibers. We know that in the non-arthritic knee, the synovial fluid brings nutrients to allow the avascular zone to heal. But we also know that the synovial fluid fills all gaps and prevents healing in tear regions that are not anatomically reduced and compressed. We know from free body diagrams that it's probably more important to reduce and compress the tibial side of the tear than it is the femoral side. And we know that the normally functioning meniscus has a good amount of anterior to posterior motion during flexor extension. The problem is the traditional central to peripheral needle penetration techniques are harder to make vertical, harder to use on the tibial side, and trap meniscus to capsule and have neurovascular risk and commonly fail to deliver anatomical reduction and uniform compression. The circumferential compression stitch, on the other hand, penetrates from bottom to top so that the resultant stitch encircles the tear and anatomically reduces and uniformly compresses the tear edges on both the femoral and tibial sides with each stitch. It also allows for repair of tear patterns that are less commonly uh, encountered, but still important. And for radial tears, it gives you optimal side-to-side -side repair vectors while at the same time compressing the top and bottom of the tear with each stitch. And you can get creative and do figure of eights as well as double locking loop stitches for root repair. And these stitches are all passed with the Soterix Nova Stitch Device, which has a hinged 1.2 millimeter upper jaw designed to follow the shape contour of the femoral condyle and femoral side of the meniscus, and a protractable, retractable lower jaw so that it can sneak into the back of a tight knee and atraumatically and reversibly surround the meniscus. So the first case is a 27-year-old male with a tibial-sided vertical tear at the level of the popliteal hiatus in conjunction with an ACL reconstruction. Two circumferential compression stitches were placed around the tear and tied down on the femoral side. The patient developed a cyclops lesion and an eight-month post-op and arthroscopy was conducted, which revealed, as expected, that the sutures had synovialized, the knots had embedded into the meniscus, and the tear had healed. And notice that the meniscus is sitting nicely within the joint, and it's not extruded or entrapped in any way. Now I'm going to back up and arrange the femur to show that there's no damage from the femoral, to the femoral condyle from the suture knots, and that the articular surfaces are pristine. Okay, now let's move on to radial tears. The literature absolutely supports that these should be repaired and that they heal. And arthroscopy just published a paper out of Harvard that showed that the side-to-side -side circumferential compression stitch had statistically significantly less displacement, higher load to failure, and higher stiffness compared to inside-out repair. So the first example is a 25-year-old football player with a radial tear of the lateral meniscus at the popliteal hiatus. And the artery and nerve look right behind that root stump. And you can see the popliteus in the background there. So the lower jaw is extended underneath the meniscus. And sutures pass from lower jaw to upper jaw where it's atraumatically self-retained. Then the lower jaw is retracted and the device removed. In this case, I passed three side-to-side -side sutures, shoveled uh, the central most one out with PDS, and trimmed a little bit of the white bite of the biter. At eight months post-op, he's asymptomatic and wants to go back to football, so I did a vision scope which confirmed healing, and he successfully returned to sport. The next case is a 19-year-old who was missing the posterior horn of his meniscus, and I found it flipped back in his notch. Now, at the time, I'll admit, I paused and thought to myself, maybe I'm plainly crazy. But in about 20 minutes, I was able to place a few sutures behind his meniscus, and since the meniscus didn't really come to an apex anymore, tied them down in front like a hay bale. The remodeling capacity of a young meniscus surrounded by non-arthritic synovial fluid is actually quite remarkable when the tissues are adequately stabilized and compressed. So then at four months post-op, I did a vision scope, and starting the notch where his meniscus used to be, I'll swing down into the joint and flush the meniscus with saline through the vision scope. Granted, this isn't as good as a probe, but it does give us a sense for how the tissue is behaving. Also notice I drag a little fat down with one of my knots, and when that happens, I usually just say stem cells. Okay, now for horizontal cleavage tears. So there's good literature that these heal, and there's no literature that they don't. So here's a 27-year-old female with a horizontal cleavage tear at the level of the popliteal hiatus, and there's the popliteus in the background. When the horizontal cleavage tears come all the way to the apex like this, you can quickly and easily uh, use the nova stitch to place sutures behind the meniscus and in front of the popliteus and around the front, which gives you a nice top-to-bottom reduction in compression of the tear edges. 
One year later, she wants to run a marathon to my Buddha vision scope to confirm healing. The femur is remolded in apex, and the sutures have grown into the healed meniscus. And the knot bundle there correlated to that knot bundle from the operation. And she's now two years out and running marathons pain-free. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.